to give his uh, brief paper. Say your name again. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the judiciary and the press, Dr. Aguilar, an event sponsored if you're in the audience. Thank you for inviting me to talk on press, ethics, and law. Let me start with a quote which you'll all be familiar with. No enactment of man can be considered law unless it conforms to the law of God. As the renowned English jurist, Sir William Blackstone, famously stated, and much of my talk on ethics is framed around one standard. A standard which in the UK you may or not be aware of is the standard in which Queen Elizabeth, in her coronation oath in 1953, swore to maintain to the utmost of her power. That is, to maintain God's law. I find it ironic. I have been invited by the chair to speak about ethics to people from professions in the UK that for the most part derive their jurisdiction from the Queen, yet are totally unethical in as much as they devote much of their time to work which is in violation of God's law. Almost everything the legal system does runs contrary to God's law, and as such is unethical. And frankly, almost everything the press does in connection with the legal system breaks one or more of the Ten Commandments, and as such is likewise unethical. In my talk, I wish to demonstrate the above statements of truth regarding the press and our legal system by drawing upon four stark case studies which span a quarter of a century, but actually belong to four separate decades. I'm going to start with Hillsborough disaster. In 1989, 96 supporters of Liverpool were crushed to death while attending a football match in Sheffield at Hillsborough Stadium. 766 people were injured. A quarter of a century later, and it is now widely accepted, that the initial blame attributed to the fans and the press by the press was based on malicious lies given to the press by the police in an effort to deflect their blame. 116 police officers' statements were altered and in a systematic attempt by the state judiciary and the police to protect the interests of the state. So there we have it. Case study number two. From a quashed verdict of accidental deaths at Hillsborough to a globally acknowledged unlawful killing of Diana, Prince of Wales. Let us not forget though that other deaths in that concern Dodi al Diana's boyfriend, and the driver Henry Paul. Unlawful killing happens to be the title of a 2011 British documentary film directed by Keith Allen. The film is about the death of Diana, Princess of Wales, and Dodi Fayed. It is financed by Mohammed Al Fayed. In my opinion, as a, for, as a former principal intelligence analyst of South Yorkshire Police, the film offers up compelling, compelling evidence to expose the British and French authorities who have covered up vital facts about the crash. The film provides insights into how the inquiry at the Royal Court of Justice on the 2nd of October 2007 was conducted unethically. The film rightly questions the impartiality of the Royal Court in a situation where it is the conduct of the Royals which should be coming under judicial scrutiny. Evidence shows that Diana knew she was going to be bumped off. Diana believed her husband, Prince Charles, was planning a car accident, brake failure, and serious head injury. There are many other indicators of a systematic cover-up of suppression, distortion, and destruction of evidence revealed in this film. But just like Hillsborough, evidence has been swept under the royal red carpet. The nature of these black operations is revealed all too clearly in this unlawful <laughs> killing film, are far too numerous to mention here. But with so many anom anomalies of the evidence, and deficiencies in investigative practice, what right-minded person could not have reasonable cause to suspect murder? The state apparatus cannot be trusted. It has abandoned God's law, and ethical standards are non-existent. I want to move on to another case study. We have been re repeatedly told that 52 innocent people lost their lives on the 7th of July 2005 in terrorist attacks referred to as the 7-7 London bombings. 
In numbering the dead, the state prefers to discount the four Muslims upon the British government and the judiciary have pinned the blame. On the 22nd of July 2005, <coughs> Two weeks later, officers followed a young Brazilian named John Charles de Menezes down the escalators of Stockwell tube station, and then in the tube train, these officers put point blank range, put seven bullets through the head. Lies and cover up ensued by senior police officers. How can we reconcile the ethics with the law and the media in the context of the subsequent judicial process that ensued with the 7 7 attacks? They were false flag. What is the nation's moral courage in speaking out against these blatant acts of state-sponsored terrorism? Where do we stand with the Ten Commandments underpinning God's law? The state, UK, has murdered and the state bears false witness. Both the press and the judiciary in the UK are instrumental in the lies and the deceit. Not until July 2010, days before I was due to deliver a terror threat assessment at South Yorkshire Police, did I, as the principal intelligence analyst, wake up to the dreadful realisation that 7-7 had all the hallmarks of false flag terror? The official government story was implausible. Prime Minister Blair had denied the country's public inquiry, saying it would be a ludicrous diversion. Premeditated blame was put on Muslims in accordance to the script. Four murdered Muslims, later tried by the media, without any lawful trial whatsoever, there was no judicial process with 7-7. The government relied on a fear fearful nation to buy the lie with an inept government narrative. Back in 2010, watching the Muad'Dib's film 7-7 Ripple Effect, in which you've all been left a copy, and I would highly recommend that you watch, provided ample proof to me that the government's official story about 7-7 was utterly false. The former boss, a director of intelligence of South Yorkshire Police, exclaimed to me, Tony, neither you or I will ever get them to tell the truth. By then, he meant MI5 and the government. South Yorkshire Police weren't saying I was wrong.